Good evening, class. This evening we're going to be focusing on lesson 7.5, compare fraction factors and products. So let's begin by taking a look at our essential question. How does the size of the product compare to the size of one factor when multiplying fractions? All right, so let's look at unlock the problem. And this is not actually going to give us a, a word problem per se like we're used to. It's going to kind of give us a real world example. So it says multiplication can be thought of as resizing one number by another number. For example, 2 times 3 will result in a product that is 2 times as great as 3. So when we're looking at whole numbers, when we multiply whole number by a whole number, that product is going to be a bigger number than either one of our factors. For example, our factors are 2 and 3. So when we multiply 2 times 3, our answer is going to be 6. 6 is therefore of the product or the answer and it is bigger than either one of our factors in this problem. So then what happens to the size of a product or the answer to a multiplication problem when a number is multiplied by a fraction rather than a whole number? And that's going to be what we're focusing on today. What happens when we multiply a fraction by another fraction or a fraction by a whole number? Is the product bigger or smaller than either one of the factors? And you're going to be able to answer that question at the end of today's lesson. So one way of doing this is to use a model. So during the week, the Smith family ate three-fourths of a box of cereal. Well, if you notice over here, this represents our box of cereal. So, and you notice that our, in our fraction, our denominator is going to be four. So if you look over here, our box of cereal is divided into one, two, three, four different parts. So we're going to start by shading the model to show three-fourths of a box of cereal. So let's go ahead and shade three of these pieces to represent our three-fourths of a box of cereal. Now our next step is to write an expression for three-fourths of one box of cereal. So three-fourths times, and we only have one box of cereal, so it's going to be three-fourths times one. Or the way I've been telling you to do in our previous lessons is to write our whole number over one. Okay, so what will be the, will the product be equal to, greater than, or less than one? Well, any time you're multiplying by a fraction, we know the product will be less than one. Now let's look at part two. It says the Ling family has four boxes of cereal. And if you look over here, you see one box, two box, three box, and four boxes of cereal. They ate three-fourths of all the cereal during the week, which means that they ate three-fourths of this box, three-fourths of this box, three-fourths of this box, and three-fourths of this box. So it says to shade the model to show three-fourths of four boxes of cereal. So when we do that, we're going to shade three-fourths of this one, three-fourths of this one, three-fourths of this one, and three-fourths of this one. So the next step, it says, is to write an expression for three-fourths of four boxes of cereal. So three-fourths times, and we have our four boxes of cereal, but as I keep telling you, we're going to put that whole number over 1. So, let's look at our question. Will the product be equal to, greater than, or less than 4? So, like I said a few minutes ago, any time you multiply by a fraction, your product or answer to that multiplication is going to be less than either one of your factors. So it is going to be less than 4. Now let's look at our third one. The Carter family has only one half of a box of cereal at the beginning of the week. They ate three-fourths of the one-half box of cereal. So 
Let's go ahead and figure out how to shade that. First of all, they only have, this is a whole box of cereal, but it says they only have one half of a box of cereal. So we're only going to shade one half. Now that is how much they had when they started out at the beginning of the week. Now it says they ate three-fourths of the one-half box of cereal. So we see over here our half is also divided into one, two, three, four pieces. So they only ate three-fourths of that. So we're going to shade three-fourths of the box. So now the next step is to write an expression to show three-fourths of one-half box of cereal or three-fourths times and it's times one-half. So will the product be equal to greater than or less than three-fourths or one-half, sorry. And we know that it is going to be less than either one half or three fourths. Now, another way that you can compare these is to use a diagram. And you can use a diagram to show the relationship between the products, which is the answer to a multiplication problem, written as fraction is multiplied or scaled, which is also resized by a number. So we can graph a point to show 3 4 scaled by 1, 1 half, and 4. So if we look at 1 times 3 fourths, we're going to come down here and we notice our number line. We have our zero and we have our whole number of one. And then in between it's broken into one-fourth, two-fourths, three-fourths, and of course one equals to four-fourths. So it's asking for one times three-fourths. So we would put our line at the three-fourths mark. Let's get a bigger line. And then we can use it to jump to show Okay, now let's think about that. You located three-fourths on the diagram and shade the distance from zero, then graph a point to show one of three-fourths, or one times three-fourths. Now let's look at our next one. It says half times three-fourths. So we're going to have to shade Our three fourths, so let's locate our three fourths. It's not perfect, but you get the idea. And then we're going to shade halfway between the zero and the three fourths. So halfway between is going to be like right in between these two dots right here. And let's go ahead and make my marker a little smaller so we can, okay. And let's see if I can get it in there. Right there. You can barely see it, but it's like right in between there. Okay. Because what you're doing is you're finding the halfway distance among the three-fourths. So you're going up to the three-fourths and you're going to shade halfway back. Now our last one is 4 times 3 fourths. So we're going to have to go over to our 3 fourths. And let's go ahead and make our mark a little bit bigger again. And right here is our 3 fourths. We shade that back. And then we need to make our jumps on the number line our three-fourths jumps on the number line. So let's go ahead and jump over to our first three-fourths. That's one jump, 
One, two, three. That's two jumps. Go one, two, three. That's three jumps. And one, two, three puts us on the three. That's showing your three fourths, and you're making the four jumps of three fourths each time. So, complete each statement with equal to, greater than, or less than. The product of one and three fourths, or one times three fourths, will be equal to equal to three-fourths and that's because we know that anytime we multiply by one the factor will stay the same for example one times three equals three or one times three-fourths equals three-fourths okay, look at the next one the product of a number less than one and three-fourths will be less than three-fourths and blank the other factor and also less than the other factor. So let's look at our last one. The product of a number greater than one and three-fourths will be great three-fourths and less than the other factor. So let's pull out our math journals. We've got some problem-solving keywords. I want you guys to copy down these keywords, and I want you to really try to memorize the ones that fall under addition, subtraction, multiplication, and division. This is going to really help you as we move into FSA testing season. So be sure you copy these down and, and kind of take a look at them on a daily basis just to kind of get them into memorization to make it easier on you when you're solving word problems. And feel free to push pause on the video while you copy these down. Now, let's go with our password that you will need to bring with you to class tomorrow. And our password for today, I'm going to keep it kind of simple. All right? So we have 3 plus 4 equals 7. Tell me what the 7 is. What word defines 7? Or what word is the answer to an addition problem? And if you say some, you are absolutely correct. So be sure you write this password down and bring it with you to class tomorrow. See you then.